exciting and new. Come aboard. We're expecting you. Floats back to you. so long. Just call me. Go for him. Oh, I love that deep voice of yours, Cheryl. Oh, for Pete's sake, Gopher, it's almost boarding time. Wake up. Anything you want, Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl. Mr. Smith, move it now. <laughs> Morning, Doc. Morning. I know you spend every waking moment thinking about Cheryl Tyson, but I didn't know you spend every sleeping moment thinking about your cover girl, too. Uh, she's not just a cover girl. She's a goddess. Well, you're gonna have plenty of time to daydream about your goddess. How come? Because if you're not up and out of there, you're gonna get fired. <laughs> Bye. I know. You want to speak, but you just can't say the words. <laughs> oh, Cheryl. There must be so many questions you want to ask. So many things you'd love to know about me. What can I say? <laughs> I'm just a world-weary wayfarer. Drift on the sea of life. Oh, sure, I climb Mount Everest. Took a surfboard over Niagara Falls. I walked a tightrope across the Grand Canyon. On stilts. <laughs> Gopher! Gopher! You're doing it again, aren't you? You're daydreaming about Cheryl Tyson. Oh, no! No, I was thinking about the pros and cons of the international monetary crisis. <laughs> Close your eyes. We have to get dressed. Oh, dear. I do hope I brought enough to wear. Will you consider the steamer trunks went on ahead? Did, uh... Appears yes, sufficient, madam. Thank you. Oh, Bertram, see to it that the dogs are put right into the kennels. They're already there, madam. Oh. All the silverware must be polished. And, uh, oh, the gardener. The last time he overwatered my zinnias. Now, you will speak to him about that, won't you? Rest assured, madam. It's all taken care of. Oh, Bertram. <sighs> what would I do without you? Well, I'm sure you'd manage, madam. Somehow. All visitors ashore, please. Time you went ashore. <clears throat> Oh, Bertram, do enjoy your holiday, too. Thank you, madam. I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. Bon voyage, madam. Me. 
train. Birthday in Washington. Reggie! <laughs> hey! Yeah, man. Hey, it's fine, man. You work on the ship? Yeah. I didn't know that. Hey, well, I know what you've been doing. I mean... Ooh. Wait! <laughs> hey, listen, man. I got two of my best friends I want you to meet, okay? Hey, wait, wait, wait. Nobody ever believes me when I tell them Reggie Jackson and I are buddies. Bertrand, I need a favor first. Name it. I don't want anybody to know I'm here. Name something else. <laughs> hey, man, the least you could do is tell me why. Where can we talk? In my cabin. I'll meet you in 10 minutes. You can't miss it. The crew deck is just above the bilge. After you. You're the home team. Solid. That's pretty nice of your mom to give you a cruise for your birthday. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, it's the least I can do for the man in my life. Wow. A whole cruise. The best I ever got for my birthday was a sailor suit. Yeah, and he's still wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> How nice of you to come and see Lucas off. Oh, I'm not seeing him off, Millicent. I'm sailing, too. But I miss your birthday. Now, here's a, a little bon voyage present for you. Uh, could I please have a word with you? Of course. What are you doing here? Well, he's my son, too. Now, you know the rules. Oh, come on, Millie. I bought a ticket. There's no law against that. Now, the court made it very clear. I've got custody of Lucas, and you have him alternate weekends. Hey, Dad! These are great! Thanks! You're welcome. Look, Mom! Yes, well, wonderful. Come along, darling. We'll go and uh, see about our cabin. Uh oh Yeah, some happy birthday. Why? Oh, my. What? My t-shirt, it's come to life. Huh? Look, look at this. Julie, it's her. Go for your undressing. It's her. Oh, Tyson. It's her. Miss Tyson. Miss Tyson, can I just see you? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Could somebody show me to my cabin? Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> He has a little problem with his sea legs. Allow me, Miss Tyson. As you were, Polly. <laughs> oh, it's you, Admiral Smith. Yes, it's me, you nautical ninny. Come here. Uh. Yes, sir. Anything you say, sir. Yeah. Put that back on, you living flash bulb. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anything you say, sir. Then stop repeating that. Well, yes, sir. Anything you say, sir. <laughs> Mr. Toby, <laughs> who is this lovely water nymph? Well, just one of your ardent admirers, sir. <laughs> Intelligent, too, I see. <laughs> Wait for me in my quarters. Thank you, sir. I'll be waiting. Dismissed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Stubing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get a hair cut. Thank you, sir. Oh, 
autographs, Fred. It's, it's, it's people coming up to you when you're trying to get something to eat and have dinner with friends. It's women hitting on you all the time. Man, it's murder. Yeah, but what a way to die. <laughs> yeah, but I've got to go to spring training in a couple of weeks, and, and I've got to get some rest. I mean, help me. You, you've got to understand. Hey, okay, okay, listen. As long as you're on this ship, you are no longer Reggie Jackson, superstar. You are just plain old R.J. from Oakland. R.J., I haven't been called <laughs> R.J. in 15 years, man. Brings it back home. Hey, man, well, I haven't been called Freight Train since junior high school. <laughs> Never did grow, did you? Hey, now, wait a minute, man. Don't forget who stomped your tail in the fifth grade. And who got yours in the ninth, tenth, eleventh, huh? <laughs> Come on. Oh, that's right, you did. You. <laughs> did not. Man. Hey, but I tell you. It's funny the way things have turned out. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of funny. I mean, here I am with a career in the leisure industry, and there you are. Oh, what is it that you do again? <laughs> hey, 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 all, all right. right. <laughs> so, this chap is the girl. Why don't you come to my cabin and then my mother wife? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's delightful. I must remember that. Hey, Mr. McDonald, looks like you're going to be the head of the crew. <laughs> Anyone who has stories like that must be a salesman, right? Well, um, I'm in um, transportation, uh, amongst other things. That could mean almost anything. Well, I dabbled in silver and uh, thoroughbred dogs. <laughs> Are you involved in the markets? Oh, yes, I'm in and out of the market all the time. <laughs> Isn't that true? Excuse me. Good day, madam. What on earth are you doing aboard this ship? Vacationing. Same as you, ma'am. On the same ship? I read your travel brochures. They sounded absolutely marvelous. With me? Well, you see, uh, I only get a vacation when you have a vacation. But Bertram, I mean, why didn't you tell me? I thought you might disapprove. And I might miss the most wonderful trip I've been sailing for for a very long time. I see. Well, what's done is done. I mean, I can't very well order you overboard, can I? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry if I've embarrassed you, madam, but... Uh, Please don't worry. It's a very large ship. We needn't see each other. Good day, madam. Oh, madam, don't talk to any strange men. <laughs> If you expect your cover girl to notice you, you have got to be cool. K O double L cool. How can I be cool? I'm just an assistant purser. She's, she's every man's dream. She's like eternity, gazing at itself in a mirror. She's she's like she's just a person. A person? What a cheap shot! <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I understand. You're just a little tense. Listen, I want to give you a shot of cognac. You know, just sort of calm you down. I'm on duty. <laughs> How about a shot of milk? <laughs> okay, but just one. Hey, freight train. I understand you make a mean pina colada. You got it. Hey, go. For it. I want you to meet a friend of mine, R.J. Oh, hi, R.J. Nice to meet you. Any friend of Isaac's is a friend of mine. Why not? <laughs> How about a cold drink? How about a cold shower? <laughs> thinking. Cheryl? Oh. 
I think that Cupid's arrow has pierced our purser. <laughs> I'd marry her tomorrow. But she doesn't even know I'm alive. Well, why don't you introduce yourself and ask her out to dinner? Mm -hmm. Dinner? Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? Go for your sweet, lovable guy. It's true. It's true. But she's Cheryl Tyson, right? I don't believe you're acting like this. Go for you've met royalty, congressmen, movie stars, skiers. You're right. Excuse me. I don't want to keep you waiting. Hi. We haven't been formally introduced. Oh, oh. hello. I'm Cheryl Tyson. I, I'm, 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 I'm... This is our assistant purser, Gopher Smith. And he has something he'd like to ask you. I, 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 I... I get stuck sometimes. Gopher, you have the lady's attention. What would you like to say? I, I, I was wondering... Uh, there you are, Miss Tyson. I forgot to ask, would you care to dine at my table this evening? Oh, thank you, Captain. I'd like that very much. It's my pleasure. Gopher, reduce you to the seating arrangements, please. Well, I, 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 sir. I'm sorry, what was it you wanted to ask me, Gopher? Uh, would you autograph my underwear? here in the gift shop. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Wow, three plates. Plus, a knife, fork, and spoon, scissors, screwdriver, and a corkscrew. The works. Thanks again. Don't put it in your new jacket, darling. It'll stretch the cashmere all out of shape. Cashmere? Oh. Just what a seven-year-old boy needs, a cashmere jacket. Better than a knife he can cut himself with. Come along, Lucas. We're going to meet in the Starlight Grill. Come along. Poor kid, he's in the middle of a tug-of-war. Yeah, and it doesn't look like there's an armistice in sight. Good evening, Miss Castlewood. Good evening. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Bertram, where do you get all those jokes? I'm president of the Steve Martin Fan Club. <laughs> Here you are, Miss Castlewood. You already know Captain Steubing, Castlewood, and this is Mr. Bertram McDonald. Mr. McDonald. Please, call me Bertram. And uh, your first name is? Estelle. Estelle. I've always loved that name. <laughs> I thought we weren't going to see each other. What are you doing here? I mean, uh, I was invited by the captain. Well, you don't think I crashed, do you? <laughs> Thank you. I understand you're from Cleveland. Julie, do me a favor, please. Mm -hmm. Ask her to eat with me instead of the captain. Have you lost your mind? No. My heart. Look, please, just, just put in a good word for me. You know, just tell her I'm, uh, tell her I'm sexy. Get 
Get your hands off of him. He's mine. Oh, mine. Get a grip on yourself, old girl. It's over between us. No, Gopher, no. Juliet was great fun, but it was just one of those... things. <laughs> no. Gopher, you must come back to me or I'll... I'll do myself in. I get so bored with women doing themselves in over me. Should we find a quiet place? No, do let's. No. No, Gopher. Gopher, no. No, Gopher. I can't live without you. Julie, you're really becoming quite a drag. Gopher, no. Show me where the captain's table is, please. I shall get it. Um... Ship, Captain. Why, thank you. Uh, but I think Mr. McDonald deserves a lot of that credit. It's a marvelous dance. Yes, I'm sure. Oh, please excuse me. I've promised this dance to Mrs. Malachek. Oh, uh, of course, Captain. Thank you. Dancing certainly seems to have created a sensation. My only expertise, Estelle, is behind the steering wheel. Would you like to pretend that I'm the Rolls Royce and steer me around the dance floor for a while? <laughs> is that an order? <laughs> well, for this ride, you'll have to sit up front with the driver. <laughs> over to her and say something like, Hello, fair beauty, here's your rum. <laughs> what have you got to lose? Hello, fair beauty, here's your rum. <laughs> approach is going to work. Well, it's been a wonderful evening. Gee, the way you say that, it sounds an awful lot like strike three. Well, what made you think you were going to get to first base with me? Well, I was hoping for a home run. Home run? Who do you think you are, Reggie Jackson? Isaac, Isaac. Frankly, you just, just man, I want to say, just, listen, about that promise you made, about, you know, not to tell anybody who I am, well, I, I've been thinking, man. Hey, I, that's okay, RJ, man. 
I don't know where you're coming from, man, because a lot of guys in your position would be using their fame to get things. Right. You know, like uh, the finest table in a restaurant. Not me. Hey, front row seats at a theater. Not me. Beautiful women. Two for three is not bad. <laughs> Can I go with you, please? No, you've got a big day ahead of you tomorrow. Your birthday, remember? Hello. Have you forgotten how to knock? I have to knock to come into my own son's room? Well, you're turning in pretty early, aren't you? No, not for a seven-year-old. Almost eight. Can I stay up? Dad says it's okay. But I say it isn't, Lucas. Thanks. Sorry, son. I tried. I tell you what. Tomorrow, we'll go skeet shooting, okay? Tomorrow, he's going swimming with me. Can I do both? Sure you can. Your uh, mother and I will work it out. Yes, we will. Now you go to sleep. Good night. Good night, son. Good night, Mom. Good night, Dad. You really have got a nerve. First you come on this cruise uninvited, and now you're trying to sabotage my vacation with my son. He's my son, too, and I've got a right to see him. Not on my time. Let's face it, Sherman, you and I just don't see eye to eye on how to raise that child. That's right. That's because you're too inflexible. Wrong. You're too permissive. Me? Permissive? A cruise. A cashmere jacket. Look who's talking. Uh, Millicent, this is getting us nowhere. Tomorrow you take Lucas for half a day, and I'll take him for half a day, and that way we won't have to fight. We always fight. We've been fighting about Lucas ever since the day he was born. Nobody knows that better than I do. I feel as if I spent the last ten years with a sparring partner. from Lowell College Humor Magazine. Mm. But you know, the hell I get it. Dancing is the loftiest, the most moving, the most beautiful of the arts. It's life itself. Oh, Bertram. I'm astonished. I mean, I always knew you were quite trustworthy, but I didn't know that you also had a very special kind of wit. Charm and intelligence. I, I never realized. Well, madam has been looking at the back of my head for the past 20 years and has never taken the time to find out what's in it. I'm sorry. It's late. Must be tired. May I see you at your cabin? Thank you. You know, it's incredible the way all those men walk around you all the time. I've just been hanging around in hopes of picking up a reject. <laughs> Did I throw away any keepers? No, but a few had possibilities. <laughs> Tell me if I'm out of line, but... Well, you must have had dozens of marriage proposals. How come you're still single? Oh, I don't know. I've met a lot of really nice men, but... I suppose I'm one of those incurable romantics. Hmm. Waiting for my knight in shining armor. <laughs> You shine the armor. You rescue a damsel, you shine the armor. You fall in a moat, forget it. Oh, boy, if you turn a prince into a frog, you think they could make a suit of armor that keeps it shine. Oh, go for love. Take me away from all this and I'll buff you every morning. He thinks you're swell. Come on, boy! Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Sorry about him, he's a rental. All right, let's go! <laughs> He's 
is very interesting. <laughs> well, I have a wonderful evening. Well, won't you come in for a nightcap? I mean, we seem to have a great deal to talk about. Uh, thank you, but I don't really think that's a very good idea. Oh, are you afraid of talking? Or are you afraid of what it might lead to? Madam, um... Estelle. Oh, Bertram. This isn't a request, it's an order. Madam, there are some things one cannot order. Oh. Good night. Could I uh, talk to you for a minute, please? Go. I mean, it's about last night. I, I know you're just joking, but what you said really is true. I mean, you know, home runs and, and candy bars. I mean, I, I, I really am uh, Reggie Jackson. I mean... Sure you are, baby. And I'm Diana Ross. <laughs> ease on down, ease on down. Knocked. Is Lucas up? No, he's not. Come back later, okay? On his birthday? I can't let him sleep it away. Oh, for Pete's sake. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. He's gone. But it's his birthday. Hey, Moishi. Missed the spot. <laughs> About last night. Yes. I've been thinking about that, too. Yes, well, please, I would like to apologize for any embarrassment I may have caused no, you. No, no. I'm the one who should apologize. What happened last night was unfortunate. What didn't happen, you mean, don't you? <laughs> Perhaps we should see less of each other for the remainder of the cruise. And I would suggest not at all. Either on the ship or off. I would be grateful, madam, if you would accept my resignation. Orange juice? Sure. Here. Hey, I almost forgot. Today's your birthday, right? Eight years old. Big deal. Hey, you should be happy on your birthday. Were you? Well, to tell you the truth, I never really had an eighth birthday. I was so smart, they skipped me from seven to nine. <laughs> Out. Yeah, but it hasn't been doing me any good, man. Well, what do you mean? Nobody on the boat seems to be recognizing me. Well, hey, man, I thought that was what you wanted. Well, it was, but that was before I struck out twice with the same lady. <laughs> Ew. Quick, quick, uh. you, you gotta do me a favor. Tell the people on the boat who I am. All right. And I know just where to start. See my friend over there? His name is Lucas. Yeah. And his parents just split up and he's taking it kind of hard. Say no more. I gotta come.
Hi. Hi. Lucas, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Reggie Jackson. Oh, hi. I thought I recognized you. Must be a Pete Rose fan, huh? <laughs> Want to talk about it? No. Well, I understand. I struck out five times in a row once. And I didn't want to talk to anybody. But you know, it seems like if you don't talk about it, the problem just seems to get worse. This is different. My parents broke up because of me. What makes you think that? I heard them. Did you talk to them about it? Nah. They don't care. You know, if the catcher doesn't give the pitcher the signal, then the pitcher doesn't know what to throw. Yeah, in other words, if you don't tell your parents how you feel, how are they going to know you have a problem? It'll just make things worse. It might make things better. You see, a family's like a team. And every guy on the team has to trust the other guy. And if you trust your folks, then they'll listen. I'm afraid. Sometimes I'm afraid, too. Sometimes I think everybody's afraid. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is how you handle it. Yeah, I guess so. You know so. Reggie says it so. Say, here come your folks. The game's over there. Don't just sit there on the bench. I'm gonna tell them. Go get him, Tiger. Hi. Oh, happy birthday, sweetheart. We've been looking all over for you. Yeah, happy birthday, son. You should see the presents you have to open. I don't want any presents. I want to talk. What's the matter, Luca? I'm sorry. It's my fault you don't get along. It's my fault you broke up. If I wasn't here, you two would be together. Oh, no. No, that's not true. I heard you last night. It's my fault. Lucas, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Um, uh, in fact, uh, your mom and I are getting back together again. You are? Oh, boy! Wow! We like Isaac and Reggie. What in the world made you say that? I don't know. He looked so sad, it just popped out. Besides, to be perfectly honest with you, the main reason I came aboard is, uh... Well, uh... I was hoping that the two of us could, uh, you know, get back together again. For Lucas's sake? That wouldn't do him or me any good. I didn't say Lucas was the reason. As always, I'm the last person to know your plans. I remember when you thought we should get a divorce, you first went to Lucas to see how he would take it, and then you discussed it with me. Oh, Melissa. Sherman, it's my life you're playing with. And maybe, just maybe, what you've decided is not what I want. Now, you came on this cruise uninvited, and you've made a complete shambles of it for everyone. I really think it would be better if you left. When we dock in Acapulco tonight, you better just fly home. Is that what you want? Yes, that's what I want. Fine. Fine. What about telling Lucas? I'll take care of it. As usual, I'll do your dirty work. Time. Thank you, Cheryl. Hi. Hello, Gopher. Have a seat. Thank you. <laughs> Comfortable, Gopher. Yes, sir. 
Sir, uh, sir, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't see you there. I'm sorry. I'm, I meant, uh, I'm, I'll see you all later. I'm sorry. Everything okay here? Okay. Doc, what's the matter with him? Oh, that's easy. He's in love with this lady. Why don't you give the poor kid a break and have dinner with him? I'd love to. But he hasn't asked me. I think you'll have to ask him. Anything to keep him off my lap. <laughs> <laughs> People are terrific. You really care about each other. <laughs> oh, sure. I turn my back and they steal my girl. <laughs> Don't worry, my pretty. We have ways to make you talk. And don't think your friend, that English spy, will save you. <laughs> Double O Gopher has never let me down. <laughs> I'm sorry we can't stay for tea. But I did remember to send you flowers. No! <laughs> the old poison gas in the white carnation trick. Again. It's a good trick. It always works. <laughs> no. Where were we? Promise me you'll never leave me again. I won't move. <laughs> Promise me you'll never leave me again. I won't. I won't. But why won't you have dinner with me? Dinner with you? Fantastic. You bet. I'm... I'm gonna go change. <laughs> Isaac's friend from Oakland. Right, Reggie Jackson. Oh. Well, you certainly have a famous name. I bet you take a lot of ribbing about that. Hmm? Reggie Jackson. <laughs> really? uh, Chef Armand, please. <clears throat> Armand! Hi, Gopher. Smith. Ah, <laughs> uh, listen, Armand. I'm having dinner tonight with the most beautiful girl in the world, and I need your help. Now, I thought we'd start with the champagne and caviar. Of course imported. <laughs> well, what do you recommend for a main course? Beef Wellington? Perfect. Now, about how much will that come to? Uh-huh. Ah, uh, tell you what, Armand, we'll just go with the champagne and caviar, okay? Okay. Uh, Armand, throw in a couple bags of potato chips, will you? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. MacDonald. Oh, hello, Mrs. Rather. Would you care to rent me a small part of your view? Please, be my guest. Have this one on me. <sighs> Thank you. It's beautiful, isn't it? 
You know, I've always been mesmerized by the ocean. It's awesome, serene, soothing, restless. Almost like people. Yeah, yes, it's true. Just look at that sky. It's as if God flipped a switch and a huge beacon came on. In all the little lights, one by one. As if they're on a timer. You're quite a romantic, Mr. MacDonald. When romance is gone, so is life. My father used to tell me, if I made a wish on the first star I saw at night, my wish would come true. Well, fathers never tell lies to their little girls. Star light, star bright, first star I've seen tonight. May I join you? Thank you, Mr. MacDonald. If my wish comes true, I'll buy you a whole sky all your own. And if my wish comes true, I'll have it already. Preparations. Champagne dinner for two served in my cabin. And guess who's going to be sharing it with me? No, thank you, but I'm really not hungry. Gentlemen, I'd like to dedicate this song to the lovely model and cover girl, Miss Cheryl Tyson.
Christopher. Oh, please, please, don't put me on a pedestal. What? Where's Cheryl? Well, she's over there talking to Isaac. Say it again, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that movie. Hey, what's the matter with you, anyway? Doc, this is never gonna work out. She's beautiful and she's famous and she can have anybody she wants. Well, she must want you. You have a date with her. Oh, it's a mercy date. Look, do her and me a favor, okay? Just tell her that dinner's off. She'll understand. How did Lucas take the news? I haven't told him yet. Um, I'm sorry about today. The way I acted, the things I said. No, oh, that's okay. I guess we both made our share of mistakes. I was angry. I meant what I said this morning. I'd like to try again. If we do, we, things will have to be different. Oh, they would be. No more ducking confrontations. No more, no more using Lucas as a way out. Oh, right, right. We, we, we'll both have to make changes. Uh, you know, darling, you, you have been pretty inflexible. <laughs> inflexible? Hmm. Well, I'm here, aren't I? Swallowing my pride. Pride? Is that all this means to you? Your pride? Well, what do you want me to do? I mean, throw myself at your feet and say, I love you, Sherman? It wouldn't be a bad start. Well, when you earn it, you will hear it. If you'll excuse me, I have to finish packing. I feel like Reggie Jackson. I talk, my, my voice is like Reggie Jackson. I hit home runs like Reggie Jackson. I am Reggie Jackson! I am Reggie Jackson! I know. I know, you uh, told me earlier. You know, it's too bad you don't look like the real Reggie Jackson. You'd be the most popular guy on the ship. <laughs> Uh, oh, Captain. Oh, yes, Mr. McDonald. Something I can do. I was looking for Mrs. Castlewood. Did she um, dine earlier? Oh, uh, no, no. She called to tell me she wouldn't be joining us. Uh, she lost her appetite. No. Oh. That can't be our cuisine. Must be your jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, now what are we going to have to eat? <coughs> Happy birthday, Lucas. Yeah, hope you enjoy the gift. Oh. Heavy, man. Remind me to get you a joke book for your birthday. Thanks. You guys are really neat. 
But can I wait to open it till my father gets here? Well, sure. And if you already have a sled, you can exchange it. <laughs> Remind me to loan you my joke book. <laughs> Maybe I had a call, Dad. Lucas. Maybe he took a nap or overslept. No, sweetheart, he, he didn't take a nap. He's okay, isn't he? Oh, yes, yes, he's fine. Lucas, today, when your father said that uh, we were getting back together, well... Getting back together. No. I think he left the ship. Lucas. Lucas. I love you. Oh, you thought how oh, you thought wrong. Hello. Do you mind if we join you for dinner? What more could a girl ask for than to have dinner with the two men she loves the most? <laughs> Sherman, I... Millie, I love you. I love you both. I hear you're not very well. Is there anything I can do? Yes. Leave me alone. Well, not till you've listened to what I've got to say. All right. I'm listening. Well, I'm afraid uh, we behaved rather foolishly last night. Did we? Well, I mean, it was foolish to think that uh, something romantic could happen in a employer employee relationship. Really? Yes. So now that we've um, eliminated the employer employee relationship. Bertram, what are you suggesting? I'm not um, I'm not putting all this very well, am I? Still. Would it offend you if I told you? that I loved you. I love you very much. Do you love me? Yes. And I'm afraid it's been going on for some time. Almost 20 years, to be exact. What took you so long? Well, it hasn't exactly been easy. I've seen you through two atrocious marriages. I mean, one oaf, one ingrate. They were off. Yes. They were. You were much too good for either of them. Good riddance is all I can say. And another thing. I love you too. I think I always have. I just never dared to believe it. Well, that does put a whole new complexion on, on things, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And, uh... Do shut up and kiss me. Is that an order? Oh, no. Just a very earnest request. Well, it has been 20 years, hasn't it? Follow me to my cabin. Is that an order? Me definitely, madam. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you.
Here's looking at you, Cheryl. And I'm not. You gave all that up for me. You regret it. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. But soon. For the rest of your life. <laughs> so dinner's off. Goodbye, Rita. Go. <laughs> Goodbye, go. If you want, just. Here's looking at you, kid. Is that all you're going to do, Gopher? Look. Ah, uh, sure. Doc gave me your message that dinner was off. Honestly, Gopher, you could break a girl's heart. Me? Break your heart? Why not? Well, because you're... you're... Cheryl Tyson. Famous model. And you're Gopher Smith. Clumsy idiot. Don't be silly. It's charming to see such unabashed affection. I like you. I'd like to spend some time alone with you. You would? Yes. Will you dance with me? Goodbye. Thank you for a most enjoyable cruise. Oh, yes, indeed. Seeing you two together, it's almost as if you've known each other for years. Almost. I can truthfully say that all other men take a back seat to Bertram. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. You're not going to leave without saying goodbye to me, are you? No. Well, I hope not. I'm glad everything worked out for you. Yeah. Thanks, Reggie. Thanks, Ivy. Glad we could help. Remember the time when you told me you skipped right from 7 to 9? Yeah. You missed the best year. All right. <laughs> I got to go now. See you in the World Series.
Remember when you struck out five times straight? Mm -hmm. I had the same problem once in Little League, but I figured if you stick your foot in the bucket, kind of tuck this elbow in here, you got it quick. Think about it. <laughs> That's my friend, Major Jackson. He said I can become a star ball player like him if I work real hard. <laughs> really? I'm not afraid of hard work. Me neither. Come on, let's go. Let's go. If you ever get to the Big Apple, you stay at my place. All right. And if you play your cards right, I got a little pull, you know. I might be able to get you some tickets to a game in the front row. Solid. See ya. OK. Hey. That wasn't who I thought it was, was it? Is, was, and always will be. Imagine that. I was on the same ship as O.J. Simpson. <laughs> You weren't going to leave here without me, were you? Depends. Want to go to the ballpark with me? There's nothing happening at the ballpark this time of year. We're not there yet. <laughs> Hello, my darling. Should we go? Yes. I don't think this is going to work. That's all right. Well, I think we're quite ready to go home now, madam. Oh, Bertram, not quite. Good care of our purser. We need him back in two days. I will. Right, well, I guess we're ready to go. Did you call a cab? I thought you were going to call a cab. Me? Well, here's another fine miss. You've gotten us in two. Well, I didn't know. I thought that you were go I thought that you were going to <laughs> Of course you didn't know. I have to take care of everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ollie. It won't happen again. <laughs> After you. After you. <laughs> Those two are very strange together. A perfect match. <laughs> <laughs> Got five times in a row once, and I don't want to talk to anybody. But you know, it seems like if you don't talk about it, the problem just seems to get worse. This is different. My parents broke up because of me. What makes you think that? I heard them. Did you talk to them about it? Nah, they don't care. You know, if the K 
catcher doesn't give the pitcher the signal, and the pitcher doesn't know what to throw. Yeah, in other words, if you don't tell your parents how you feel, how are they going to know you have a problem? It'll just make things worse. It might make things better. You see, a family's like a team. And every guy on the team has to trust the other guy. And if you trust your folks, then they'll listen. I'm afraid. Sometimes I'm afraid, too. Sometimes I think everybody's afraid. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is how you handle it. Yeah, I guess so. You know so. Reggie says it so. Say, here come your folks. The game's over there. Don't just sit there on the bench. I'm gonna tell them. Go get him, Tiger. Hey. Oh, happy birthday, sweetheart. We've been looking all over for you. Yeah, happy birthday, son. You should see the presents you have to open. I don't want any presents. I want to talk. What's the matter, Luca? I'm sorry. It's my fault you don't get along. It's my fault you broke up. If I wasn't here, you two would be together. Oh, no. No, that's not true. I heard you last night. It's my fault. Lucas, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Um, uh, in fact, uh, your mom and I are getting back together again. You are? Oh, boy! Wow! We like Isaac and Reggie. in the world made you say that? I don't know. He looked so sad, it just popped out. Besides, to be perfectly honest with you, the main reason I came aboard is, uh, well, I was hoping that the two of us could, uh, you know, get back together again. You said that Dancing with spooning, set to music. <laughs> <laughs> it's from an old college humor magazine. Mm. But you know, to have I get it. Dancing is the loftiest, the most moving, the most beautiful of the arts. It's life itself. Oh, Bertram. I'm astonished. I mean, I always knew you were quite trustworthy, but I didn't know that you also had a very special kind of wit. Charm. And intelligence. I, I never realized. Well, madam has been looking at the back of my head for the past 20 years and has never taken the time to find out what's in it. I'm sorry. It's late. Must be tired. May I see you at your cabin? Thank you. You know, it's incredible the way all men walk around you all the time. I've just been hanging around in hopes of picking up a reject. <laughs> Did I throw away any keepers? No, but a few had possibilities. <laughs> Tell me if I'm out of line, but... Well, you must have had dozens of marriage proposals. How come you're still single? Oh, I don't know. I've met a lot of really nice men, but... I suppose I'm one of those incurable romantics, mm. waiting for my knight in shining armor. <laughs> Slay a dragon, you shine the armor. You rescue a damsel, you shine the armor. You fall in a moat, forget it. Oh, boy, they can turn a prince into a frog. You think they could make a suit of armor that keeps it shine? Oh, go Take me away from all this and I'll buff you every morning. He thinks you're swell. Come on, boy! Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Sorry about him, he's a rental. All right, let's go! He 
It's very interesting. <laughs> well, I have a wonderful evening. Well, won't you come in for a nightcap? I mean, we seem to have a great deal to talk about. Uh, thank you, but I don't really think that's a very good idea. That's because you're too inflexible. Wrong. You're too permissive. Me? Permissive? A cruise? A cashmere jacket? Look who's talking! Uh, Millis, this is getting us nowhere. Tomorrow you take Lucas for half a day, and I'll take him for half a day, and that way we won't have to fight. We always fight. We've been fighting about Lucas ever since the day he was born. Nobody knows that better than I do. I feel as if I spent the last ten years with a sparring partner. from Lowell College Humor magazine. Mm. But she said, how do I get it? Dancing is the loftiest, the most moving, the most beautiful of the arts. It's life itself. Oh, Bertram. I'm astonished. I mean, I always knew you were quite trustworthy, but I didn't know that you also had a very special kind of wit. And charm. And intelligence. I, I never realized. Well, madam has been looking at the back of my head for the past 20 years and has never taken the time to find out what's in it. I'm sorry. It's late. Must be tired. May I see you at your cabin? Thank you. You know, it's incredible the way all those men walk around you all the time. I've just been hanging around in hopes of picking up a reject. <laughs> Did I throw away any keepers? No, but a few had possibilities. <laughs> Tell me if I'm out of line, but... Well, you must have had dozens of marriage proposals. How come you're still single? Oh, I don't know. I've met a lot of really nice men, but... I suppose I'm one of those incurable romantics, hmm. waiting for my knight in shining armor. <laughs> You shine the armor. You rescue a damsel, you shine the armor. You fall in a moat, forget it. Oh, boy, they can turn a prince into a frog. You think they could make a suit of armor that keeps it shine? Oh, Poor kid, he's in the middle of a tug of war. Yeah, and it doesn't look like there's an armistice in sight. Good evening, Miss Castlewood. Oh, Bertram, where do you get all those jokes? I'm president of the Steve Martin Fan Club. Uh, <laughs> Here you are, Miss Castlewood. You already know Captain Steubing. Yes, Castlewood. Sir. And this is Mr. Bertram McDonald. <laughs> Mr. McDonald. Please, call me Bertram. And uh, your first name is? Estelle. Estelle. I've always loved that name. <laughs> I thought we weren't going to see each other. What are you doing here? I mean, uh, I was invited by the captain. Well, you don't think I crashed, do you? <laughs> Thank you. And you're from Cleveland. <laughs> there she is. But Julie, do me a favor, please. Mm -hmm. Ask her to eat with me instead of the captain. Have you lost your mind? No. My heart. Look, please, just, just put in a good word for me. You know, just tell her I'm, uh, 
Tell her I'm sexy. Yourself, old girl, it's over between us. No, Gopher, no. Julie, it was great fun, but it was just one of those things. <laughs> no. Gopher, you must come back to me, or I'll, I'll do myself in. I get so bored with women doing themselves in over me. Should we find a quiet? Do let's. No. Julie, you're really becoming quite a drag. Oh, my darling, shall we go? Yes. I don't think this is going to work. That's all right. Well, I think we're quite ready to go home now, madam. Oh, Bertram, not quite. Good care of our purser. We need him back in two days. I will. Right, well, I guess we're ready to go. Did you call a cab? I thought you were going to call a cab. Me? Well, here's another fine mess you've gotten us into. Well, I didn't know. I thought that you were going to... I thought that you were going to... Of course you didn't know. I have to take care of everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ollie. It won't happen again. <laughs> After you. After you. <laughs> Those two are very strange together. <laughs> A perfect match. <laughs> <laughs> Say something like, hello, fair beauty, here's your rum. What have you got to lose? Hello, fair beauty, here's your rum. <laughs> hello, bear beauty, here's your bum. 
I don't think the swab approach is going to work. Well, it's been a wonderful evening. Gee, the way you say that, it sounds an awful lot like strike three. What made you think you were going to get to first base with me? Well, I was hoping for a home run. Home run? Who do you think you are, Reggie Jackson? <laughs> Isaac, Isaac, Franklin, you just, just man, I want to say, just, listen, about that promise you made about, you know, not to tell anybody who I am, well, I, I've been thinking, man. Hey, I, that's okay, RJ, man. I don't know where you're coming from, man, because a lot of guys in your position would be using their fame to get things. Right. You know, like uh, the finest table in a restaurant. Not me. Hey, front row seats at a theater. Not me. Beautiful women. Two for three is not bad. <laughs> Can I go with you, please? No, you've got a big day ahead of you tomorrow. Your birthday, remember? Hello. Have you forgotten how to knock? I have to knock to come into my own son's room? Well, you're turning in pretty early, aren't you? No, not for a seven-year-old. Almost eight. Can I stay up? Dad says it's okay. But I say it isn't, Lucas. Thanks. Sorry, son. I tried. I tell you what. Tomorrow, we'll go skeet shooting, okay? Tomorrow, he's going swimming with me. Can I do both? Sure you can. Your uh, mother and I will work it out. Yes, we will. Now you go to sleep. Good night. Good night, son. Good night, Mom. Good night, Dad. You really have got a nerve. First you come on this cruise uninvited, and now you're trying to sabotage my vacation. <laughs> Where's Cheryl? Well, she's over there talking to Isaac. Say it again, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that movie. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you, anyway? Doc, this is never going to work out. She's beautiful, and she's famous, and she can have anybody she wants. Well, she must want you. You have a date with her. Oh, it's a mercy date. Look, do her and me a favor, OK? Just tell her that dinner's off. She'll understand.
May I come in? Of course. How did Lucas take the news? I haven't told him yet. Um, I'm sorry about it. <laughs> well, as they say, three's a crowd. Uh. <laughs> See you later. Bertram, your dancing certainly seems to have created a sensation. My only expertise, sir, is behind the steering wheel. Would you like to pretend that I'm the Rolls Royce and steer me around the dance floor for a while? <laughs> is that an order? <laughs> well, for this ride, you'll have to sit up front with the driver. <laughs> Say something like, hello, fair beauty, here's your rum. What have you got to lose? Hello, fair beauty, here's your rum. <laughs> approach is going to work. Well, it's been a wonderful evening. Gee, the way you say that, it sounds an awful lot like strike three. Well, what made you think you were going to get to first base with me? Well, I was hoping for a home run. Home run? Who do you think you are? Reggie Jackson? Guys, frankly, just, just man, I want to say, just, listen, about that promise you made, about, you know, not to tell anybody who I am, well, I, I've been thinking, man. Hey, I, that's okay, RJ, man. I don't know where you're coming from, man, because a lot of guys in your position would be using their fame to get things. Right. You know, like uh, the finest table in a restaurant. Not me. Hey, front row seats at a theater. Not me. Beautiful women. Two for three is not bad. <laughs> Can I go with you, please? No, you've got a big day ahead of you tomorrow. Your birthday, remember? Oh, Nene. <laughs> Come here. Uh. Yes, sir. Anything you say, sir. <laughs> Put that back on, you living flash bulb. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anything you say, sir. Then stop repeating that. Yes, sir. Anything you say, sir. <laughs> Lovely water <laughs> Just one of your ardent admirers, sir. Intelligent, too, I see. <laughs> Wait for me in my quarters. Thank you, sir. I'll be waiting. Dismissed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Stubing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get a hair cut. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Go for it. Hmm. What? Uh, next. Uh, next. Next. Uh, why don't you like form a oh, single line and uh, take us? Yeah. Yes, we were Oh, 
autographs, Freitas. It's, it's people coming up to you when you're trying to get something to eat and have dinner with friends. It's women hitting on you all the time. Man, it's murder. Yeah. But what a way to die. Yeah, but I've got to go to spring training in a couple of weeks. And, and I've got to get some rest. I mean, help me. You, you've got to understand. Hey, okay, okay, listen. As long as you're on this ship, you are no longer Reggie Jackson's superstar. You are just plain old R.J. from Oakland. R.J., I haven't been called <laughs> R.J. in 15 years, man. Brings him back home. Hey, man, well, I haven't been called Freight Train since junior high school. <laughs> Never did grow, did you? Hey, now, wait a minute, man. Don't forget who stomped your tail in the fifth grade. And who got yours in the ninth, tenth, eleventh, huh? <laughs> Come on. That's right, you did. <laughs> did not. Man. Hey, but I tell you. It's funny the way things have turned out. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of funny. I mean, here I am with a career in the leisure industry, and there you are. Oh, what is it that you do again? But can I wait to open it till my father gets here? Well, sure. And if you already have a sled, you can exchange it. <laughs> Remind me to loan you my joke book. Maybe I ought to call Dad. Lucas. Maybe he took a nap or overslept. No, sweetheart, he, he didn't take a nap. He's okay, isn't he? Oh, yes, yes, he's fine. Lucas, today, when your father said that uh, we were getting back together, well, getting back together. No. I think he left the ship. Lucas. Lucas! Lucas. Lucas. I thought you were wrong. Oh, well, you thought wrong. Oh. Hello. Do you mind if we join you for dinner? What more could a girl ask for than to have dinner with the two men she loves the most? <laughs> Sherman, I... Millie, I love you. I love you both. I hear you're not very well. Is there anything I can do? Yes. Leave me alone. Well, not till you've listened to what I've got to say. All right. I'm listening. Well, I'm afraid uh, we behaved rather foolishly last night. Did we? But I mean, it was foolish to think that uh, something romantic could happen in a employer employee relationship. Really? Yes. So now that we've um, eliminated the employer-employee relationship... Bertram, what are you suggesting? I'm not... Um, I'm not putting all this very well, am I? Estelle, would it offend you if I told you when romance is gone, so is life. Yes. My father used to tell me, if I made a wish on the first star I saw at night, my wish would come true. Well, fathers never tell lies to their little girls. Star light, star bright. First star I've seen tonight. May I join you? Thank you, Mr. MacDonald. If my wish comes true, 
I'll buy you a whole sky all your own. And if my wish comes true, I'll have it already. made all the preparations. Champagne dinner for two served in my cabin. And guess who's going to be sharing it with me? No, thank you, but I'm really not hungry. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to dedicate this song to the lovely model and cover girl, Miss Cheryl Tyson. Yes, have not it? Now, will you kindly follow me to my cabin? Is that an order? Me definitely, madam. Definitely. <laughs> Here's looking at you, Cheryl. Baby, 
You're famous, and I'm not. You gave all that up for me. You regret it. Get your hands off of him. He's mine. Oh, mine. Get a grip on yourself, old girl. It's over between us. No, Gopher, no. Julie, it was great fun, but it was just one of those... things. <laughs> no. Gopher, you must come back to me or I'll... I'll do myself in. I get so bored with women doing themselves in over me. Should we find a quiet? No, do less. No. No, Gopher. Gopher, no. No, Gopher. I can't live without you. Julie, you're really becoming quite a drag. Gopher, no. Show me where the captain's table is, please. I should get him. Um, um. Ship, Captain. Why, thank you. Uh, but I think Mr. McDonald deserves a lot of that credit. It's a marvelous dance. Yes, I'm sure. Oh, please excuse me. I've promised this dance to Mrs. Malachek. Oh, uh, of course, Captain. Thank you. Sensation. My only expertise, sir, is behind the steering wheel. Would you like to pretend that I'm the Rolls Royce and steer me around the dance floor for a while? <laughs> is that an order? <laughs> well, for this ride, you'll have to sit up front with the driver. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I think I see a friend over there. You're not going to leave without saying goodbye to me, are you? No. Well, I hope not. I'm glad everything worked out for you. Yeah. Thanks, Reggie. Thanks, Ivy. Glad we could help. Remember the time when you told me you skipped right from 7 to 9? Yeah. You missed the best year. All right. <laughs> I got to go now. See you in the World Series. Remember when you struck out five times straight? Mm -hmm. I had the same problem once in a little, but I figured if you stick your foot in the bucket, kind of tuck this elbow in here, you got it licked. Think about it. <laughs> That's my friend, Major Jackson. He said I can become a star ball player like him if I work real hard. <laughs> really? I'm not afraid of hard work. Me neither. Come on, let's go. Let's go. If you ever get to the Big Apple, you stay at my place. All right. And if you play your cards right, I got a little pull, you know. I might be able to get you some tickets to a game in the front row. Solid. See ya. OK. Hey. That wasn't who I thought it was, was it? Is, was, and always will be. Imagine that. I was on the same ship as O.J. Simpson. <laughs> hey, you weren't going to leave here without me, were you? Depends. Want to go to the ballpark with me? There's nothing happening at the ballpark this time of year. 
We're not there yet. Hello, my darling. Shall we go? Yes. I don't think this is going to work. That's all right. Well, I think we're quite ready to go home now, madam. Oh, Bertram, not quite. With me? There's nothing happening at the ballpark this time of year. We're not there yet. <laughs> Oh, my darling, should we go? Yes. I don't think this is going to work. Perhaps all right. I think we're quite ready to go home now, madam. Oh, Bertram, not quite. No, I think we're quite ready to go home. Take good care of our purser. We need him back in two days. I will. Right, well, I guess we're ready to go. Did you call a cab? I thought you were going to call a cab. Me? Well, here's another fine mess. You've got nothing to. Well, I didn't know. I thought that you were going to. I thought that you were going to. Of course you didn't know. I have to take care of everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ollie. It won't happen again. Hmm. After you. After you. Hmm. Hmm. Those two are very strange together. A perfect match. Join you for dinner. Uh, well, what more could a girl ask for than to have dinner with the two men she loves the most? <laughs> Sherman, I. Millie, I love you. I love you both.
still. I hear you're not very well. Is there anything I can do? Yes. Leave me alone. Well, not till you've listened to what I've got to say. All right. I'm listening. Well, I'm afraid uh, we behaved rather foolishly last night. Did we? Well, I mean, it was foolish to think that uh, something romantic could happen in an employer-employee relationship. Really? Yes. So now that we've um, eliminated the employer-employee relationship... Bertram, what are you suggesting? I'm not, um, I'm not putting all this very well, am I? Still, would it offend you if I told you that I loved you? I love you very much. Do you love me? Yes. And I'm afraid it's been going on for some time. Almost 20 years, to be exact. What took you so long? Well, it hasn't exactly been easy. I've seen you through two atrocious marriages. I mean, one oaf, one ingrate. They were off. Yes, they were. You were much too good for either of them. Good riddance is all I can say. And another thing. I love you too. I think I always have. I just never dared to believe it. Well, that does put a whole new complexion on, on things, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And, uh... Do shut up and kiss me. Is that an order? Oh, no. Just a very earnest request. 